to the wine podcast for everyone. Today we're featuring a Sangiovese from Italy and a Sauvignon Blanc from Spain. It's the holidays, so we're going to discuss giving wine as gifts and bringing wine to a dinner party. For my wine, I grabbed something from the back of the fridge that had been chilling for a few days. It's a Toro Bravo Verdejo Sauvignon Blanc. It comes from Spain and its vintage is 2020. Right as I opened it, I got the citrus notes, more on the orange side, less of the lemon. Usually it's lemon. On tasting it, there was a little bit of peach, citrus all around. But when you think of Sauvignon Blanc, I'm kind of expecting a really crisp, almost clean finish. And this one's finishing a little tart, which is different and nice. But I think that's the Verdeo. It's got a little bit of a softness to it. That's definitely the Verdeo. So it's an interesting blend. And they've done, like in the previous Toro Bravo review, they took Tempranillo, which is a little bit more tannic and angular, and they softened it out with Merlot. They seem to have done the exact same thing here. They took kind of a sharp, crisp Sauvignon Blanc, added a softer grape, and not a bad result. What would you give it out of five? I'm having a hard time with this wine because sometimes when you blend a grape, you're expecting to see characteristics of each grape. In this particular bottle, everything sort of just turned into one flat flavor that is delivering a bit of a tart finish. And I'm not really impressed by it. Ideally, you can take the best qualities of each grape and let them shine. And I think this wine kind of folded in on itself. For that reason, I have to give it a two out of five. Toro Bravo Verdejo Sauvignon Blanc for $8.30, two out of five. For the full review, go to nosnobwine.com or see the show notes for a link. Seeing as it's the holidays, we thought it would be a great time to talk about a couple of hot topics that we get asked about often. I love giving wine as gifts. I think it's the perfect size every time. And obviously, we have the nosnobwine.com website, and we drink a lot of wine. So it's not really a challenge for us to pick out the perfect wine to give as a gift. I love receiving wine as a gift, but people really don't like giving me wine as a gift because they don't know what to give me or if I'm going to like it. And that's... That's sort of been this constant uh, struggle uh, the people in my life have faced. Well, uh, let me let me uh, clear the air. There's really no bad wine gift out there. None. I mean, at the very least, it'll be interesting. Exactly. Well, I guess I should say if it's interesting, maybe I shouldn't review it on the website. I would like to hear about it. <laughs> I don't know if the person who gave us the wine would. Then they're not real friends if they can't take some criticism on a wine they purchased and didn't make. Yeah, that's fair. How would they know it was a bad wine? I think when you're giving to somebody who, you know, occupational hazard works and works in wine, as you could say we both do, I think they're nervous is about the price, honestly. I, th- I think they think, oh, this is $8. How can that be a gift? You know, 10 bucks, 20 bucks. I have to spend 30. If I don't spend 30, is it really a, a, a gift? Oh, it's a gift. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't see what the problem is. As long as you buy it, it's a gift. Don't give me your homemade stuff. We already discussed this in previous episodes. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, don't do that. If you want to stay on a budget, go to the notesnobwine.com website. Set the five-star filter. Set the zero to ten dollar filter. Really easy. There's a few wines there, like you know, the the like the Fantini that if somebody was offended by receiving an eight dollar, nine dollar wine, just point in the website. Say this wine's been reviewed as five stars on the no snob guys. It's five stars. <laughs> If they're offended by your wine, open it right there. Drink it right in front of them. Whole thing. None for them. Pour it in a decanter. See if they can guess the price. (laughs) I like that. That's a good one. It is, you know, it's the holiday season as we record this particular episode. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of wine buying that happened. uh, Well, see, that's your style. You like buying all your wine for for the month. I normally do. Yeah. But Christmas means an extra trip usually because you have to bring a few wines places and you have a few extra days off work so Um, that means you know you have a couple extra days home you don't have to go anywhere that's interesting because i definitely do take that little christmas break those few days where the world is quiet i think our we drink a lot more in my house uh those two three days a bottle usually gets open afternoon and evening yeah bottle a day bottle in a bit who's counting between two people it's pretty reasonable if you have 
the day off and you're not going anywhere. Yeah. A bottle and a half. Why not? To two on a Christmas day. Not sure. Christmas day, but well, if leading it's, up to Christmas. When giving wine is a gift, normally I'd say, you know, if you can find out something about the person that you're giving the gift to, whether they're like red or white, you know, that's a big plus. But usually you you won't know that. There's far more red wine sold in the whole world than white. I would generally, if you don't know, I would go with a red. Chuck? Unless uh, you know otherwise, I would say red wine as a hostess present, great choice. Let's let's move under the assumption that you know nothing about this person's preferences. You've never dined with them. You just want to give them a bottle of wine. You know, maybe it's somebody that you interact with a little bit, your favorite dry cleaner, maybe your dog walker. Well, your dog walker, you interact with a lot. Casual uh, uh, acquaintance in your life. I think 8 to $15 is the perfect spot to give that casual gift. Great price point. Yeah, there's and there's a lot you can do in there. As I go to the wine store this time of year, I definitely see you can tell who's giving bottles of wine as a gift because they've got the, you know, they've got the full cart and they're just pulling down like three of each, yo, know, three of these, oh, two of these, three of these. It's pretty clear. Sean, when you're a host, do you love getting cheap, random bottles just out of pure curiosity of what's in there? I, I do. I mean, we've created an entire website and podcast of it on that premise. Please. I think it, I think it's fun getting a, a random bottle you've never seen or heard of before. No idea what the price is. Don't care what the price is. Actually, if it's cheap and good, I'm even more interested in it because there's a good chance I'll repurchase it. But if it's an expensive bottle, that's really good. Well, that's good for tonight, but I'm probably not going to buy that again. One last piece of advice on giving wine as a gift. This is not the time to get creative, especially if you don't know the person. You're going to want to stick with, if you're giving red, Cabernet Sauvignon, Shiraz or Syrah or Zinfandel. And we're going to talk about Zinfandel more in future episodes, but it's almost guaranteed to please. If you're giving white, stick with Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc or Pinot Grigio. Those are the classics. Those are the most popular grown and sold grapes. So that should help a lot. So giving wine as a gift, stay between $8 and $15, air towards a red wine, stick with the mainstream grapes. So Chuck, it's the holiday season. You're getting invited to a lot of dinners, get-togethers, parties. So if you're invited to a close friend's dinner party where you know them well, and you're probably going to know a lot of people there well, what advice would you give our listeners for picking a wine? So go for a, a crowd pleaser like a Cabernet Sauvignon if you're going for a red or a Shiraz. Try to land between the $15, $20 mark. Shirazes, you want to pick from a country known or reputable for making great Shirazes. So go for an Australian Shiraz. That's a great advice. 15 to $20. Uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, can't go wrong with California. Land between $15 and $20. Or a Zinfandel from California, just as good. I think they're, they're not interchangeable, but they're close cousins. That's excellent advice. Advice. And you'll, you know, we'll note that Chuck, you're suggesting New World wines, and they're just a little easier to approach if you if you're not sure if you have a mixed group. Definitely, Zinfandel's a great suggestion. And let me tell you, I'm going to tell you a little story of, of why that is. People have these parties and they play a game. And the game goes like this: Everybody who's invited brings two bottles of the same wine. One bottle is opened and put on the table. And the second bottle is put away. Everybody tastes all the open bottles of wine. Then they vote based on, a, they put a number on the bottle and they vote for that number bottle. The wine that gets the most votes is the winner. And the person who brought it takes home all the second bottles that were brought and reserved aside. Oh, that's a great challenge. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be fun. The two or three times that I've been asked for advice for people going into this party, I've given them Zinfandel recommendations, and they've won every time. Very nice. <laughs> Zinfandel is a crowd pleaser. It just it, it's got a little something for everyone. A Zinfandel is almost as if you blended Cabernet Sauvignon and Shiraz, in my opinion. I like that. And just maybe a little extra pinch of sugar. Now, those were the reds. How about the whites? Is this similar to the advice I gave before? The only thing I would say with whites is I like a off dry Riesling. I find that's a good crowd pleaser. Uh, love a good off dry Riesling. Even you can a, go appetizers or even just before the meal. What else is nice? I like the Riesling Gewurztraminer blends. On my top picks page, I have a strewn Riesling Gewurztraminer. Everyone who I've opened it for takes a picture of the label, buys it for themselves, their house white. 
Right. And it's interesting because Gewurztraminer or Gewurz, as it's sometimes called, alone, sometimes I just find it a little too sweet, a little too sappy, but rich, rich, too rich. Yeah. You, You add the Riesling and something magic happens. It just cuts it. Yeah. I really like what you said about it. It sort of fits... You know, if you all the phases of dinner, pre appies sippers, appy sipper, you know, appy pairing, it can go up against a, a roast turkey. You can bring it right into the meal. Yeah. And then, you, you know, when your Riesling warms up a little at the end of the night and you, you can still sip it because it's still really nice. Doesn't have to be served particularly cold. And yeah. it, it even sometimes I get notes of honey as it warms up a little, yeah. which is nice. Absolutely. One time I had a guest bring sparkling wine as a as a host gift. And I actually kind of appreciated that. It was it was Prosecco, so Italian sparkling. You know, those things are usually 15, 16, 17 bucks on average. And uh, they had it chilled when they when it got here. And I thought that was great. And we opened it and we were having some kind of, you know, appetizer, random appetizer. And it, it was awesome. I, I was pleasantly surprised that somebody did that. Excellent host present excellent thing to open as an aperitif yeah that's a that's a really good one we're going to do a whole show on sparkling wine and it does you know champagne is not it if you're trying to spend under 20 dollars. so we've got a lot of good advice to offer on that how about that uh, i've always had this awkward moment when you bring a host gift i think you and i are the same i would never show up to dinner without a bottle of wine in tow you always feel good walking into someone's house with a bottle of wine. You know it's going to be appreciated. Exactly, exactly. There's always this sort of awkward moment where, you know, you know the host has wine out and you're like, did, did, you, did you want to open that? Is that, can, uh, yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, let's open it. You know? <laughs> yeah, what if you had a wine planned for your dinner already and are you supposed to open the person's wine that they bring you? Is that a hostess present for your enjoyment later? Yeah. Or is that for all of us right now? You know, I don't know because I've had this awkward conversation 99% of the time. Like, yeah, no, uh, if you want to open it right now, that's fine. And they're like, oh, well, yeah, I had a wine, but yeah, more, more the better. And uh, right. I guess I don't know what to do either. I somebody somebody did this to me and I appreciated it. They gave me wine and they said straight up, this is for you to enjoy later. I know you have wine already planned yeah. for tonight. This yeah. is for your enjoyment later. They just took the weirdness out of it and said, you know, this is for you. Or up front, they've said the same thing. This is for you. If you want to enjoy it later, if you want to enjoy it this evening, whatever suits suits your plan. I like that. Take the awkwardness out of it before it even starts. Yeah. If you're bringing wine to a dinner party, do you just bring it in? Do you just bring the bottle? Or are you putting it in a bag? Are you wrapping it in some way? Are you... I mean, I know as a wine is a gift, I, I would buy the, you know, well, I, I go to the dollar store and get the, I think we all do that, but I get, get the uh, sleeve uh, to give it. Um, how would you bring wine and present it to the host of a dinner party? Host of a dinner party, no bag, no wrapping, no ribbon, nothing. Just, bam, here it is. Straight up bottle as the host present. If it's a birthday present or a gift, 100% it goes in a bag. I always feel weird and I'm kind of walking up to their front door with this sort of bottle under my arm. It's not wrapped. It's not a surprise. I guess it's not a surprise. Is it expected? It shouldn't be a surprise that you bring wine to dinner, as you should. As you should. I agree. Flowers, extra points? Extra point. Not necessary. (laughs) Always appreciated. Chocolates. Chocolate. Cookies, whatever you want to bring. I mean, I'll take it. What are you doing next Saturday? Come over for dinner. (laughs) (laughs) I want all of it. How about frequency? Like if you go to somebody's house often close friend, family, you're not bringing a bottle of wine every time. That's not realistic. Can't be bringing it every time. No. But I guess if you know there's going to be new people or they're putting a little bit of extra effort in or maybe they're celebrating something, then you absolutely would bring the wine, I think. Bring it more often than not. Yeah. 50-50. Don't worry, guys. I don't expect everybody who shows up my door to come with wine in hand. I mean, I wouldn't say no. Well, they're going to now. Yeah. Okay, fine. I'm not going to say no. But Fine. (laughs) Holiday season or not, when you're bringing wine for somebody, stick to the most popular grapes. Good price range, $15 to $20. Can't go wrong. Everyone's going to like it. No one turns down a bottle of wine as a hostess present. Nobody. Agreed.
Today I'm featuring my house red wine. It's an Italian Sangiovese made by Fantini. It's from Puglia and it's a 2020. So we're not only trying this red today because it's my house red, it's also a great holiday wine, a crowd pleaser. You get black cherry, pomegranate, raspberry right on the nose and on the palate. Mild earthiness, medium oak, medium tannins, dry, almost extra dry. This is your holiday red crowd pleaser. Bring it to the table, get a magnum everyone will love it this wine gives you a lot for the value actually you taste more than just one or two major notes it's highly unusual it's one of those unicorns under 10 bucks not something you uh you bump into often very well rounded overall wine fantini sangiovese 2020 eight dollars 95 cents five out of five my house red on my top picks page nosnobwine.com Sean, is that wine getting any better in the glass as uh, we record this episode? Nope. Okay. Be a three. That's not right. Eight dollars and thirty cents. Two out of five stars. Bird. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Why don't we have those anymore? You know why? I'll tell you why. We can't have nice things like that anymore. People would ruin it. It is a blend. I think it is. I asked you if it was anything else. I didn't read that. Got to redo your whole review. It is a blend. Ah, fuck. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Wine Podcast for Everyone. Be sure to rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts as it helps other people find us. Yeah, tell your friends about the podcast. We know they drink wine too. <laughs> for more information on any of the wines we discussed, go to nosnobwine.com or check the show notes for links. The Wine Podcast for Everyone is a production of No Snob Media.